In a previous video, we look at uh, putting a Sonoff Mini um, inside the back box for a light switch and how that was problematic for me uh, because I had no neutral there. Um, and I came up with this sort of little circuit solution. So th this allows you to put the Sonoff up by the light fixture itself and still retain um, light switch control. But in this video, I want to look at the uh, Shelly One which is uh, a lot smaller than the Sonoff Mini. And uh, we'll see if we can put it behind uh, the light switch. It certainly fits in there, there's plenty of room. Um, or if we can actually put it by the light fixture itself with a similar type of circuit hack. So my first thought was take a look behind the light switch and see what we've got. And surprise, surprise, there's no neutral behind the light switch. Which is a problem really because the Shelly one requires a neutral to function. Now I believe there is a version called the Shelly 1L that can operate without a neutral uh, but I've only got the Shelly um, 1 so um, I need to find a way around this problem so I was thinking to somehow stick it by the light fixture itself just cut the two wires that go to the light bulb and splice the Shelly 1 in between. So when you take your light switch off the wall, it's entirely possible that there's no neutral behind the light switch uh, because the neutral could be traveling through the conduit all the way through to the light bulb directly. And um, you might think, uh, well, to put your Shelly one at the light switch itself would be an easy option, but the Shelly one requires a neutral to operate. So what we require is the live supply, the switch live out and a neutral feed for the Shelly to work properly. Now I think the Shelly 1L version does work without a neutral, but uh, you might not have enough space behind the light switch to put the Shelly one there. So I thought it would be great if there could be an option to have the Shelly one go right by the light fixture itself. You essentially just splice into the wires that go to the light bulb and put the Shelly in between. This would be great and really simple for a lot of people to um, wire the Shelly in this particular way. This way our Shelly one will have its precious neutral which it needs to function. Um, the only problem is its live supply would now be broken by the switch which means if you turn the light switch off our Shelly one is disabled and we don't have any Wi-Fi control. So we don't have a permanent live supply. But we do have the switch supply, which is the signal to trigger the Shelly one. So all we need to do is to find a way to supply the Shelly one with power and at the same time to be able to utilize the switch as a trigger to trigger the Shelly one. And this is where my little clever circuit hack comes in. Now, if we attach a diode straight across the switch terminals, we can feed half wave DC to the um, Shelly one's live terminal if the switch is in the open position the Shelly one will still get half wave DC and when the switch is closed the Shelly one gets full wave AC which means it's powered even if the switch is in the off position. Now the Shelly one does not mind half wave DC because its internal rectifier is only a half wave rectifier with a capacitor that smooths out the ripple. Now all we need to do is figure out a way how to get the switch signal to the Shelly 1. And we can do this by making a circuit that detects the difference between half wave and full wave. And a optocoupler is the perfect device for this. Now this little optocoupler circuit is incredibly simple. It consists of a very common optocoupler, which is essentially an LED and a phototransistor in one, and there's no electrical connection between them. And what you've got is you've got um, a current limiting resistor which drops the voltage down and um, you have a rectifier diode which only allows one half of the AC waveform to pass through and you have a, uh, a filter capacitor which smooths the ripple out uh, to a certain extent. Um, and because of the way um, the, uh, the diode inside the light switch is in the opposite polarity um, it won't work if the switch is in one position. It will only uh, detect the opposite uh, half of the waveforms so essentially once it's in full waveform so um, yeah so it's 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 just a, a resistor a rectifying diode and a capacitor 
and when the mains is connected in full wave the LED lights up phototransistor turns on and that's it really now in order to make a practical circuit instead of using one resistor I use three of them connected in series which spreads the heat dissipation and also the voltage rating of quarter watt um, resistors aren't suitable for just to use one but if you put three in series it's fine it, it spreads the voltage rating uh, the capacitor to smooth it out is a 470 microfarad capacitor and the voltage rating doesn't have to be for mains voltage because it's limited by the forward voltage of the LED. It's a 1N4007 rectifier diode and our optocoupler is a very common uh, variety optocoupler used in uh, switch mode power supplies. They're dirt cheap to buy. It's the PC817. So now that we have the optocoupler circuit creating a, a virtual uh, switch signal at the Shelly one locally, let's uh, focus on the LED light bulb. Now many LED light bulbs can work on both AC and DC and I've tested several of them and some of them work fine on half wave DC but a lot of them flicker really badly on half wave DC so I've added a diode and a small capacitor to smooth out the ripple and this completely eliminates the flicker that a lot of LED light bulbs generate on half-wave DC. So now of course I have to build everything onto a piece of prototyping board but I thought that this is the opportunity to make a nice adapter board that allows me to take all the connections on the Shelly 1 and just have a terminal for in and a terminal out to the light bulb and it, it'll make connecting the Shelly 1 at the light bulb much much simpler. So effectively at the light fixing you just cut the wires to the light bulb, it goes into the one terminal and the feed that used to go to the light bulb goes into the other terminal and these pins they will neatly just seat into the terminals of the uh, Shelly 1 and you just tighten up all the screws and that's it, you're done. And um, all the connections are made for you, no terminal blocks um, no extra neutrals to wire up or everything. Everything is done, all done in one go. Now in order for this to work you need to see if um, your LED light bulb can tolerate half-wave DC if it can work properly on half-wave DC. So the easiest way to do this is to um, feed the, the live or the neutral through a diode to the bulb and um, if it works properly it'll be at full brightness without any noticeable flicker. Um, so I made a little test rig um, and it's just a, a diode in line with the live and the neutral goes straight to the bulb. So that means there's half wave going to the bulb. So if we turn it on now, as you can see this IKEA light bulb works absolutely perfectly. So um, I've tested a few different light bulbs and um, some of them don't work at all, um, but some of them flicker quite horribly. So if you look at this one, on the camera it shows a bit of flicker, but to me it flickers really badly and it's actually quite irritating on the eye. So there's a solution if you have one of these light bulbs, uh, is to add a little capacitor across after the, di after the diode. So all I've done is I've put a capacitor across the bulb terminals, and so the diode feeds um, half-wave DC into the capacitor. The capacitor acts like a reservoir and smooths out the ripple. And now if we take this really horribly flickery bulb there's no flicker whatsoever. So uh, I might incorporate that into my circuit. In my Sonoff version I didn't actually have this uh, little filter capacitor um, because my IKEA light bulb didn't flicker at all. But uh, I'm guessing there's going to be quite a few light bulbs in the market that will flicker on half-wave DC. So on my little um, circuit hack board I've included that capacitor and the diode as well. So here we have a little simple test circuit and you've got our live and neutral coming in. The live goes down to the switch and then back up again into the light bulb and the neutral passes straight through to the light bulb. And we've spliced the live and neutral that go to the light bulb put one end to our adapter board, the other end to the light bulb. A really easy way to connect it. And um, as you can see we still have Wi-Fi control. 
as well as control from our switch. And behind the light switch we have a diode that um, passes in the off position, when the switch is in the off position, it passes halfway through to our Shelly one, so it's powered even though the switch is in the off position it gets half wave and when the switch is in the on position it gets full wave so it always has power but uh, what you get here is our little uh, half wave detection circuit detects between half wave and full wave and therefore knows which position the switch is in and sends the signal to the SW input of our Shelly 1 so uh, I think it's time to try it up by the light fixture itself and see if it works So I'm thinking we could just splice this in half, and stick our uh, Shelly in between, like so. So if we cut this in half, more or less here. So we can just get our neutral into this side and the feed that goes to the lamp. Our live feed goes in here and our neutral feed goes in there. And then with the help of a bit of double sided tape we can just stick it down. And there we go, all mounted, that simple. So now we just need to give it a test and see if it works. And the light switch works, let's switch it off with the light switch. Right, now let's try with Wi-Fi control. That's it, so the Shelly has Wi-Fi control. And let's turn it off with Wi-Fi control. That's great. So we have both switch and Wi-Fi control. So everything works perfectly. That's amazing. Right, so it's time to stick the cover back on. And turn it off with Wi-Fi wi control. Job done. So please let me know in the comments what you think of this little adapter board that allows you to easily install the Shelly one by the light fixture itself. It might actually be worth turning this into a PCB if enough people find this handy. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.